Hello, my name is Steve Streza. And I'm Paul Peppers. And we're the developers of the PonyCons app, and you're listening to the MBS Show. Hello and welcome to the MBS Show, episode 121. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is James Cork. You start derping already, Norman. They won't <laughs> know. They it's won't like you know. Haven't, it's like you haven't done this in a while. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, okay, here's, here's the thing here's, here's the backstory for people at home We're recording this a day later than usual Because reasons And this is throwing off my game Normally it's like a puppy You move him away a couple of days Or you change the bed from of place And he's suddenly lost he's like, ah, Where am I? <laughs> at least I'm a cute puppy <laughs> uh, No, you're not Oh. Uh, but how do you like the new intro? Like, that's custom. How do you like it, James? That's, yeah. That, so that, oh, wow, we have a theme song. That's mm. awesome. I like it. Thank, thank you, Mando. Yay. The rest of the people here are confused because I forgot to link them. But never mind. I'm awesome. <laughs> <laughs> also joining us today is Rom. Hello, all you happy people. Hey, Rom. How are you doing, man? Awesome. Awesome. Just uh, Rankins. Okay, cool. Um, I'm sorry for yesterday, man. <laughs> I know you could have mashed potatoes and stuff, but I'm sorry. No worries, no worries. I kind of want a french fries anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah. A- anywho, and our guest for today is the people who have been working on, who are working on PonyCon, the application, not the convention. <laughs> hey guys. Hello. Hey there. So, we have full paper and Steve? Yes, Steve Streza. Uh, Steve Streza. So, how are you guys doing, man? Doing pretty good. Saturday yeah. morning, or Sunday morning here, so it's a little early for me, but uh, pretty good. Sunday afternoon here, so mm-hmm. lazy Sunday, right? Lazy yeah. Sunday. It's a Sunday. La- Sundays are lazy by default. It's a Monday for me. <laughs> uh, timing! Norman, that's because you live in the Middle Earth, so of course it's, la- it's Monday for you. One does not simply. Skyping to us from the future! <laughs> Indeedy. Ah. <laughs> uh, the future is dark. <laughs> Like literally, it's dark. I can't see anything right now. <laughs> that's yeah. You see, that's exactly how the future is. <laughs> yeah. So, well, it's been a while since you came on. How are you doing, man? I'm doing all right. I'm I'm trying to remember the last time I spoke with you guys. It has been a while. It's uh, been a year more. I, I months. Guess so. Literally months. I think the last time I saw I saw you in a in a conversation on a Skype call, it was like December 2013. Mm-hmm. Oh my, it has been more or less. less. Well, that's with yeah. James. With me, yeah. it's been a while back. Oy. Yeah, because uh, I know that last time you showed up was during one of my charity streams. Mm, I remember yeah. that. And I think mm-hmm. I gave you a hard time about <laughs> something on Tumblr. I'm trying to remember. Anyway, no, um, yeah, yeah I've, 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 been doing, I've been doing all right. Um, pretty much just plugging away the same old, same old in terms of work. The only new thing is I've started running, which is fun. Running from the masses of brony people that want to destroy you? Yes, exactly. <laughs> I, I've been doing cardio training because people are out for my blood. No, no, I just, just, just running. That's, I mean, you, you asked what's new. That's the only real new thing. Everything else is just me trying to escape from my book fort. <laughs> okay. So I okay. spent so long in my book fort. <laughs> escape okay. from book fort castle. That's the new MLP episode coming out next week now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but okay, full. Just to make sure everything's the same with you in terms of the show. Um, favorite character? Favorite character? What did I say last time? I think I said Davenport, right? Yes. Yeah, I okay. said Davenport. Um, see, I've been asked this question since, and I changed my answer away from Davenport, even mm-hmm. though Davenport, oh. of course, and Sophus is, is, is an amazingly underrated character. Um, <laughs> I, I think I have to finally, though, admit that. Princess Luna is probably chief in my affections in terms of characters. She's just... Uh, Luna's wonderful, especially what they do with her in the comics. Mm, mm, mm. I, I love the comics. That, that portrayal I'll is just marvellous. Mm-hmm. I, I will allow this, because Luna is best princess. Yeah, and voiced by the same actress as your favourite pony, James. As best pony, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, I'll allow it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. I'm joking. And favourite episode? Uh, favorite episode. I think I said Lesson Zero before, and that's mm-hmm. that's still my favorite episode because it's still the nightmare of every student, especially <laughs> grad students. It's yep. oh no, the yeah. supervisor is going to descend from the heavens and tell us to meet them in the library. Oh, no, <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> that's a good one. That's a good one. So okay, things things seems to be the same with you and Steve. 
since you're yes. new, everything's going to be super new. So, favorite Ooh. character? Favorite character has to go to Scootaloo. Oh, okay. I, uh, I, I identify a lot with her character, as, and, and I, I just think it was a really uh, kind of deep choice they made to make this character a Pegasus who can't fly, and like her whole life is she's kind of viewing herself as a lesser Pegasus for it and trying to overcome that. Like I think that character is really deep, and because they kind of shove her off into the cutie Mark Crusaders, we don't get to s- explore that as much as we maybe should, so... You know, I I totally love her character. I wish they'd kind of do more with her. So yeah, Scootaloo. Mm. Oh okay, okay. Um, before we record, you you said something interesting. So, favorite waifu. Favorite waifu would go to Fluttershy because she's just so adorable. I know what you mean. <laughs> she's so cute. She's my favorite <laughs> too. Yay. She's a horse. Oh my god, you guys. Uh, yeah, you, that's true. You know, James, <laughs> don't don't destroy our illusion of grandeur, please. I never understood the whole waifu thing within this fandom. Like, yeah, okay, I understand why you might find a character uh, attractive personality-wise, but don't call a wife. Oh, damn it. I wouldn't even call Raiti my waifu. Like, she's my favorite character because I, I identify with her, but I wouldn't call her my waifu. James, delusion of grandeur. Do not destroy it, please. Oh, no, uh, what do you mean? Delu- you are talking about suspension of disbelief, uh, delusion of grandeur. But anyway, do not get between me and my waifu. <laughs> Indeed, you dummy. <laughs> oh well, God, people no. mean it to different levels. So surely, most people, when they say waifu, they are just jokingly using mm. that as a term for favorite oh, yeah. character. Right? Oh, yeah. They I, really I, yeah. take it to the <laughs> the level of planning a, an elaborate ceremony to wed this character. <laughs> Presumably. I, like I mean, that. I don't know. If, if that's what you do, then... then Fully, okay. Only in Japan. Only in Japan I that really, thing happens. I really like... Only in Japan, really like whatever brings you joy. <laughs> I really like the use of the ho- of the word waifu for, like, tongue-in-cheek, kind of, like, funny, yeah. haha, let's poke fun at it. But when people talk about it seriously... Oh, no. <laughs> I, I tell you the word that I really like that I've been seeing crop up more and more, and that's husband horse. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. it's just, horse. Oh, yeah, it's just so horse. cute. Wife horse and husband horse, especially <laughs> yes. between a uh, shining armor and and um, and Kate and so I just yeah, think it's I love absolutely your horse, adorable. Horse wife. <laughs> yes, uh, yeah. I love your horse wife. I love your horse I love husband. Your horse wife. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and horse as the suffix to a word. I think you're going to end up with comedy. The other exactly. one that I, the other yeah the other one that I heard is like people using uh horse bando and horse fu. <laughs> Horse, horse foo instead of waifu and horse bando instead uh. of horse bando. Uh, yeah, you know what? For that, I actually, I actually am very happy with that. Yeah, that is, that is hilarious. Uh, oh, dear. Now we know. Now we know your favorites. Um, favorite episode. Favorite episode. I'm gonna go with it's about time. Ooh. Uh, just because um, I I love any kind of medium that tries to explore the idea of time travel and mm. all of the like the ridiculous paradoxes that can arise as a result and like how do you resolve all of that and on top of that twilight just loses her mind in that oh, episode yep, and that's yep, always yep. fun to watch <laughs> oh well at least it's not a shin megami tensin game oh my gosh the, <laughs> did you see did you see i don't know if it's still up out there but there was um someone posted a video on youtube of that episode that it loops on the part of the time travel <laughs> <laughs> so like when the when the when the video ends, it actually starts again in the, in the oh. time travel part, and it keeps going over and over and over and over. <laughs> very clever. That's, oh, that's, very very clever. Clever. that's cool. Things that people in this community will do. Mm. That yeah, oh, I like that. I really oh. like that. Need to find it. Yeah. Of course, written by the all p- powerful M. A. Larson. Yay. <laughs> yep. I believe well, in now him. Now I hate it and everything about it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no. He's he's your nemesis after all, Foley. Yes. No, yeah. no. It's, it's, it was also the episode where they canonized the Ponyville Hayboard. So. Oh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, yes. and funny enough that it was called in continuity when Tyrek Te- escaped prison. Mm. Yeah. Mm. No one saw that coming. Everyone yeah. thought it was just a, a throwaway gag. With oh, yeah, yeah. 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 When you suddenly realize that the one disaster that Twilight was trying to prevent was re- re- tired of getting out of prison. <laughs> Pretty Very much. Nice to they were playing the long game on that one. Oh, yeah, really long. Talk Two and a half seasons. Uh, so, anywho, Steve, how did you become a fan of the show? Um, well, I started seeing um, a lot of references made on, on Twitter and Reddit and you know other internet communities. And uh, after about like 
four or five months of seeing that, uh, there was the video that came out. It was like, uh, what was it? What uh, Fluttershy's so- or what Pinkie Pie's song really sounded like? And it mm-hmm. was the episode from season one where uh, she's Flutter Guy, but they overdubbed the whole uh, thing with like yeah. really vulgar rap lyrics. Oh, that one, that one. Yeah, I remember that one. Uh, <laughs> And I remember oh seeing God, it just yes. being like, oh, my God, what have you done, Internet? But then I watched it, and I was, like, perfectly cut to the vocals. Like, the animations <laughs> and stuff were all edited, like, perfectly. And I'm like, okay, something is going on here because nobody would spend this much time preparing a video to be this perfect unless, like, this wasn't just me, right? Like, nobody would spend that much time. I found a couple of my friends were watching it. And I just asked them about it, and, you know, they go like, oh, it's a really good show. You should check it out. It's fun. It's silly. And it's, you know, it's, it's, you, you, you might enjoy watching it as someone who likes cartoons, because I spend a lot of time watching cartoons. So finally got around to watching it, just thinking to myself, like, I can't believe I'm doing this. Why am I downloading <laughs> My Little Pony? What's wrong with me? And then, um, you know, by the end of the weekend, I had finished season one going, why is this the end? Why? <laughs> and it was like two months until season two. So uh, in that weekend, I had completed my brony transformation <laughs> and became one with the Phantom. Welcome to the herd. What episode was that moment? We all, we all had that moment where you are watching, you finish the episode, and you take a step back, and you suddenly realize, why do I like this so much? What, what episode was it for you? Um, for me, I think it was probably the Trixie episode. Yes, yes, yes. That was mine as well. Because <laughs> it's just like, okay, this is this is kind of interesting. They're bringing in a character just to throw him away, but they're introducing some really weird personality things, and they're actually like looking at a character from the perspective of personality. And I thought that was kind of a you know deep thing, maybe that you would would not necessarily expect in just like a, the beginnings of a children's show. So I thought that was probably really fascinating. And plus, you know, at that time, like I really loved Trixie's character. Uh, so. <laughs> everybody loves a Trixie. She yep. only got better. She only got better if mm-hmm. you if you follow both the 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 comics and the TV show. Mm. She only she only got better. Don't follow the fan on. They ruin Trixie in yeah. the fan. Yeah, I've got I, a question. I, for I Steve, wasn't crazy so about what they did with Trixie in season three, but that episode just seemed a little weird to me. Mm-hmm. So, all right, it's so all full. What do you what do you want to see? Well, I have a question for Steve, if I if I may ask. Oh, please do. Because he because he mentioned sure. that it began his sort of spiritual <laughs> transformation into a brony. When did you begin your physical transformation? Because I mean, you we're looking at your Skype icon, and you have very interesting coloured hair. Oh, yes. Um, Explain, well, please, <laughs> waifu thief. <laughs> if only I could see. It. Oh because yeah. I can't. So uh, I have blue hair, and I dyed my hair blue about a year ago, mm. um, because it, it was actually right before last year's BronyCon, uh, which I had never been to a fandom convention of any kind, whether it's anime or uh, whatever you know, cartoons or anything, or or pony. Uh, you know, I had been in the the pony fandom for two years, never went to a convention until last summer. So I figured, screw it, I've never been to one of these things. I'm gonna go as cosplay. Okay. And so I tried doing a vinyl scratch cosplay, and it kind of failed. So, um, whatever. But uh, fast forward a couple months, and uh, Equestria Girls happened, uh, and you know there was the whole drama about Flash Century and everything. <laughs> And oh so, my gosh! <laughs> uh, my next convention I was going to was Nightmare Nights in Dallas. Oh yeah. And so um, for that one, I decided to put a little bit more effort into a cosplay and actually went in full uh, Flash Century cosplay <laughs> from Equestria Girls. <laughs> oh god. And uh, I I still bring that one to cons just because it's fun to make people mad about it. <laughs> it was brilliant. Did you, it's a great outfit. Did you did you, really did well. you run out? Did you run around stealing Twilight plushies and Twilight prints and Twilight everything? Like, ah, I did, I did, your I did set up one of those one time just so, like, it wouldn't seem like some guy was just running over and taking a Twilight plushie off of someone's booth. But, uh, yeah, did that a couple times. It was fun. Oh, man. Awesome. That's cool. <laughs> you're, you're my hero. Yay. So, the last question is, hmm? what do your family and friends think about your love for the show? They don't understand it at all, but they haven't understood a, a thing of my fascination with animation for the better part of 20 years. So uh, yeah. uh, at this point, they're just like, whatever, he's into some other cartoon. It's fine. It's, it doesn't, it's fine. Just let him do it. Yeah. <laughs> 
but I have brought a few friends who are not in the fandom, at least into watching the show. And oh. while they don't appreciate uh, the, the uh, show at my level of enthusiasm for it, they do, do certainly see the uh, aesthetic and sort of moral-based uh, kind of values for it. I mean, you know, I think the the brand My Little Pony as a as a TV show has had such a stigma over the years of just, like, 20 years of not-so-great animation and not-so-great storytelling that, like, anybody would look at this and compare it to what came before it and sort of the stigma about it and just say this is better than what you would expect. So, you know, yeah, they're yeah. Get, they're get, they're coming around on it. That's for sure. But that's the, they don't yeah, understand that's... me a lot, so <laughs> we just kind of I mean, let it go. But what you just said is actually kind of funny because sometimes people forget that the the, the ones that sometimes complain <laughs> about one episode or one or another. So yeah, they, they don't realize, dude. The, the episodes in the first seasons were way worse than this. Like, they were so pandering and bad and not very good when it comes to characters and stories. Well, there was season the one of Friendship is Magic? No, or... it's like, yeah, when they talk about Friendship is Magic, they complain about it, saying, ah, oh, this episode wasn't very good. And I'm like, guys, My Little Ponytails was so f- horrible. <laughs> it's oh, like, you, you don't remember the, the days when... There was one badass episode with a badass villain, and then the next episodes were just let's sell the next toy line yeah, and yeah, not yeah. do anything interesting. At least, at least with Transformers, there was always something exciting going on. <laughs> oh. My Little Pony wasn't that. My Little Pony was the lucky star for Western children back then. It was oh, so boring. Oh, James, fun, funny that you mentioned Transformers. Um, recently, I saw one of the nerds review or. Oh, WTF moments in Transformers G1 and uh, it got me curious by watching this one episode called Megatron Master Plan Part 1 and 2 I watch it and oh my god that is the same plot line as Transformers 3 <laughs> really? I'm not even joking are you sure? Uh, hang on, hang on. Do you want to keep going forward and then kind of like such way and wait I, know, I just have to say this because people have been bashing Transformers 3 blah blah okay, blah okay. and I just watch that just because of the angry video game nerds mention it and it was really strange i watched i watched the video but uh-huh. i forgot about, I, I forgot about that part in particular i'll have to rewatch it yeah but anyway i watched that thing like the classic 80s transformers and oh my god it's the same plot line as transformers 3 <laughs> uh, but anywho um let's move on and steve thank you for sharing your story for us thank you for having me on the uh, show today guys Yay, we're not over yet. So anywho, let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is housekeeping. And Rom, it's your time to shine. Yay! Okay, Error Free Northwest plug. Error Free Northwest art track, event schedule, and vendor map. Art is one of the staples of the MLP fandom, and there is surely no lack it at Ever Free Northwest. Featuring events like our Meet the Artist Hangout, panels like How to Draw Ponies for the beginning for the beginners and advanced artists our arts and crafts room, and our pony video and PMV contest. Area Free Northwest has the art thing for you. But wait, and there's more. We know that with all these events and panels, Area Free Northwest has over 100 panels and, event, and events this year. And it'd be hard to keep track of everything. Thankfully, Area Free Northwest has something to help. We've, we've, we're pleased to announce that our event schedule builder are now live. Not only that, we be remiss if we didn't talk about our amazing vendor hall and our interactive vendor map. Check out the show notes in the description below. Awesome. Looks like they have a map, so I wouldn't get lost at a con if I were to go. Hey, anywho. A hundred vendor panels. How big is that place? Uh, I'm not 100% sure. All oh, right. well, it'll, it'll be fun. It'll be fun. Anyway, um, if you don't want to get lost, go to the website and check out their maps. <laughs> if, it looks like you have to have a map to go to the convention. Oh, anywho, on to the next one. And the next housekeeping, built a bear workshop vendor table at Ever Free Northwest 2014. An observant pony may be may have spied on the vendor map. We have special guests joining us in the Ever Free Northwest vendor hall. We're happy to announce that the built a bear workshop will be joining us this year as a vendor. Not only that, but the great and powerful Turexie has decided to grace built a bear workshop vendor table with her presence on July the 4th. Joining her as her volunteers will be the Apple family's own Applejack and Apple Bloom. So come on down and be one of the first to get your Trixie Applejack and Apple Bloom Build a Bear Workshop plushies at Everfree Northwest this 4th of July. Comes complete with fireworks, or at least that's what we tell Trixie. 
Bill a bear. That's fun. Oh, th- th- anybody who wants a pony plush at an affordable cost, this is awesome for them. And you have Trixie, you have um, Applejack and Apple Bloom. That's awesome. And if you pay the extra cash, you can get all the accessories for Trixie. So that would be awesome too. Yay! Oh, <laughs> we rock. Anywho, next one, man. And last but not least, our Free Northwest guest announcement, Tony Fleece. Tony Fleece, is that how you pronounce it? Yep, yep. Okay, just making sure. Harry Pony, do you like comics? Of course you do. Want to meet one of the talented artists who brings our favorite IDW adventure to life? We thought so. So please put your hoops together in giving a hearty, settle Seattle welcome to no other than Tony Lee, please. Tony's tre- credits include in main series cover art variant of four issues 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 19, micro series issue 2 and 4, micro series cover art variant for issues 2, 4, 5, Friends Forever issues 2 and 5, Friends Forever cover art variant for issues 3, 7, not yet released, and 9, not yet released as well. From his webpage, his bio is, is as follows. Tony Fleece is a comic book writer and artist whose credits include In My, in my Lifetime, Tell Them Johnny Watt is here, and My Little Pony, amongst others. He lives in Los Angeles. His mother says he is handsome. Who are, who are we to argue with his mother and want to come meet the handsome hoof behind the pony panels? Then you better make it to Everfree Northwest next weekend. Admission is still available at the door and have a fun time awaits for all. Be sure to drop by his table in the Everfree Northwest Vendor Hall at booth number 59. Repeat, Everfree Northwest Vendor Hall, booth 59. Woohoo! This is awesome. Oh, I'm so jelly. Same here, man. Same here. Wish I could go with them to a convention and shake hands with amazing artists. I just wish One I day. could go to a One convention. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anywho... That was housekeeping, and let's move on to the next topic, which is news time. And Rom, it's your time to shine again. Yay. <laughs> oh, let's get all to sleep. <laughs> Good night. I'm Romald, and this is the NBS Show News. In today's news, moldy, molded Rainbow Dash figure popping up in Europe. Do you live in Europe? Do you want to get your hands on a Rainbow Dash molded figure? If the answer is yes, then you are in luck. Over in Poland and France, a My Little Pony magazine is giving away a molded Rainbow Dash figure with every purchase of the magazine. Yay! I've seen the molded figure and it looks similar to the Funko toy line, but it's similar, but not the same. I am going to make a... I'm going to pointify this, okay? Mm -hmm. Not only in France, we have that here too. Oh, you have that in Spain too? Yes, Spain has been Spain has been editing the My Little Pony magazine for three months already, and oh. every single month they have released uh, the magazine along with a figurine of one of the main six. The first one was Pinky, the second was Twilight, so was and the Applejack? third one, the th- yes, the third one was Applejack. And I have Twilight and Applejack, and they look great. Like Applejack looks so good; she even has the the freckles on her face. And the hat. she doesn't have a. She doesn't have a hat, but oh. she has the freckles and she has the cutie mark and the colors are correct. And It is like a miniature Funko. The, the hair and the tail, they are molded. They are not made out of that pl- uh, cheap plastic hair. Oh. It is awesome. And the magazine is just for euros. So, I mean, I mean, for euros for a toy that already is bigger than a blind bag, but better than a, than a brushable, that is so good. Oh, cool. So, yeah, I- yeah. I wonder if you can get it in the UK. I'll have, mm, to, I'll have to keep an eye out for it. Yeah, take a look at that, because in the UK, I remember, I, when I was there, when I was in Scotland, I remember they had the magazine, but the, the, the things that came with the magazine were so cheap. They were like, uh, you know, bi- binoculars, that oh. they are not real binoculars. They just have plas- a cheap translucent plastic on the, on the lenses, and it's, they don't work at all, or like a guitar <laughs> that doesn't have strings. Like, it's, it was so... Bad. Wow. Uh, well, yeah. At least we know that it's most of Europe then. So because like I live here in Malaysia, so I got no idea. <laughs> Poland's right next to me, but I still can't travel to there. You know what, Rob? You should go and look if they do sell it in your area. They don't. The uh, only thing they have is a cheap Chinese coloring book. Uh, the only My Little Pony thing we got here. Oh That's my. It. And one of the local channels, I think they're actually broadcasting the show, but translated poor, dubbed it. Really poorly into Lithuanian. Wow, okay. Uh, Anyways, moving on. Yeah, moving on. Let's go to the next one. Anywho, continue on with Rainbow Dash. Giant Rainbow Dash statue spotted in 
Myers. 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 Mm-hmm. I saw what they did there. <laughs> Over in the land down under, a huge rainbow dash statue was spotted in Mayer's store. The statue is on display at the MLP section of the toy department, and it looks gorgeous. Yay! This is one of those display settings that they put on top of the display cabinet thingy. And funny enough, um, this display thingy popped up in Transformers 4. That statue is so magnificent. Mm-hmm. It looked now kind that's... of sim- it looked kind of similar. Yep, it it popped up and oh, wow. Uh, I don't know what to say. I I don't mind watching Transformers just because of that. <laughs> uh, mm. We're talking about Transformers again. Oh my! How did that end? Thank yeah. goodness it wasn't a statue of Twilight Sparkle because Steve would have just nipped over there on a plane and just stolen, stolen it. it. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> oh god! Right out of the shop. Yep, yep. Uh. Yay! You, you, oh god. You deserve that one, man. Uh, but anywho, yeah, um, what can what can we see? This is a display setting thingy. Um, selfies much? Uh, Let me just take a selfie. 50 hours later. Just one more. <laughs> okay. Oh, it hasn't gotten stolen yet, I'm surprised by, but... It's big. It's big. You oh, cannot put said. that in your pocket or under your jacket. You'll have to like, oh my god, look at that! An elephant fly! And yeah. run away as they're looking in the other direction. Yep. <laughs> but anyway, on to the next one. Okie dokie. Game Loft MLP game heading to the Windows platform. If you haven't played the MLP game by Game Loft because you didn't have an iOS or Android device, now here is your chance. Game Loft recently published the game on Windows 8 and Windows Phone platform. The game runs beautifully on the big screen for Windows 8, and using a mouse to interact with the environment makes it easier to play the game. Links can be found in the show notes below. Yay, it's been a while since I played this game, but <laughs> who is playing this game currently? Uh, I, I keep don't... trying, and the Parasprites take over my entire town in about 20 minutes, so mm-hmm. I just don't bother anymore. All right, Rom, you were saying? I don't have an Android or one of those fancy smart butt phones, because I hate touch screens. Oh, uh, okay, so I no Windows 8. them with a passion. So, yeah. Uh, okay, no Windows 8 then? I got Windows 7, but no Windows 8. Ah, uh, okay. And James, you still playing it? I kind of gave up on it. I open it every now and then because I like the Minecart uh, oh, minigame. Okay. It's kind of fun. It's probably, I like it because it's probably the only playable minigame of the entire <laughs> uh, bunch, you oh, know? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. all of the minigames you have, this is the only one that looks like a game. Oh. Uh, I I actually got to a point that I even hacked the game in order to get like 9,999 <laughs> gems. Yeah. And, you know, it's funny, the hack still works even with all the updates that they really? made. So I can st- yeah, it, oh, but yeah, it's whenever, Android. It's, when it, yeah, it's, uh, I have it for my Android tablet. Um, But it, 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 I have it really abandoned because, again, I don't have time to play video games oh, and yeah. this one is a video game. So. But I am like, Windows 8... And it's moving uh, to Windows 8. I mean, I mean, nah, not not enough for me to mm. to get a copy of Windows 8 in my system. Yeah, I have yeah, Windows yeah. 7, which is probably the most stable system uh, that Windows has had since since Windows XP. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to move to Windows 8. I, it's not worth it. Yeah, yeah, I'm true. I, I personally here recently got a new laptop and it came with Windows 8. So you know, why not, right? Exactly. Mm-hmm. And Foldy, what about you? Uh, I didn't actually play it. I've, uh, I think I downloaded it a while ago, but I've never really tried it out because it was quite buggy at the start. And yeah, I don't really have the the time mm-hmm. either. And I, I fear the Paris Bright invasion because I'm uh, always hearing yeah. about how annoying that is. So yeah. uh, I'll check it out one day maybe. Yeah, I, I've played it before, and uh, no, I, I just gave up on it and played Diamond Dash. <laughs> but anywho, <laughs> well, let's move on to the next one. Rom, Roger that. This year, My Little Pony San Diego Comic-Con exclusive revealed. With Comic-Con being a few weeks away, Hasbro has been teasing with its upcoming MLP Comic-Con exclusive. In 2012, it was Derpy Hoops. In 2013, it was DJ Pond 3, a.k.a. Vinyl Scratch. And now in 2014, it's going to be Main Yak and Humdrum. There will be two versions of the exclusive. The first one will be the molded figure of Maniac and Humdrum, and the second will be the Equestria Girls doll of Maniac. Links can be found in the show notes below. James, you should be excited about this one. <laughs> I kind of am, yeah. <laughs> yeah being as uh, Power Ponies is your favorite episode for season four, right? It's you know the you know the yeah it is no it's not just my favorite. I have so many favorite episodes of season four. It's one, of even favorites, funny. one of the favorites. One of the favorites. It's uh it, it's one of my ten favorite episodes of uh, <laughs> season yeah, four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's ridiculous. Uh but. 
I'm looking at it and I'm thinking mm, that is going to be a maniac comic that takes place in mm-hmm. the Equestrian Girls universe. I wonder that, how that's going to work. That is the weird part. That is the part that makes me frown. I'm like, mm, really? The maniac in the... And don't get me wrong. I like Equestrian Girls. I like mm-hmm. it all right. I think it's, uh, I think it's an all right movie. It's oh, an all right God. property. And it's doing well for oh. Hasbro. And whatever brings money to Hasbro, that's better because the more they can purchase new episodes for us to watch. So, hey, win-win. Um, James, but... You- Something what? hit me. Some, something hit me while you were talking about this. Um, okay. The remember in the 2013 annual they had the Equestrian Girl comic where they introduced the whole thing and who was interviewing the girls and stuff. Sunset Shimmer. And, you know. Remember that one? Yeah. This one they're introducing Maniac coming to the Equestrian Girls, and oh god, I, I may have a fear that the villain for this one might be. Maniac. Oh god. Well, why not? I don't know, but oh god. Can you imagine? Can you imagine the maniac in the Equestria Girls universe in Rainbow Rocks? That will be interesting. That will be a ramp. It will be a rampage. I mean, yeah. she's already doctor. She's a pony version of Doctor Octopus mixed with Sedusa from Powerpuff Girls. Mm-hmm. I mean, if if she goes into a, Equ- you know what? Now that I think of it, if she goes into Equestria Girls. She will be closer to Sedusa than before. She will be an even bigger shout out to Lauren Faust and her work. Well, that would be interesting, but oh my god. I didn't think about it from that point of view. All of a sudden, now I'm really looking forward to it. Damn. Oh, what did you do to me, Norman? <laughs> I don't know. Now I'm getting more scared. Oh god. I'm not scared yes, because. Just keep breathing, boss. Just keep breathing. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm not scared because um, it's going to be suck. I'm just scared that the fandom is going to tear it a new one. Well, that's going to happen anyway. Oh, yeah. But yeah, like, you know, you cannot avoid it. Just, the, just enjoy it or don't. Yeah, right? yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Take don't it worry about it. what other people are going to worry about. Oh, yeah. I'm, just, I'm just worried about how they're going to approach it because it's only mm. eight pages. So I am like, oh, really? How can no. you do some... Yeah, it's eight pages long. And I'm mm. like, how can you make a compelling story in eight pages? You're, you're, you're going to have to be a really, really good writer and very good artist. Mm. So... But what is the normal Power Ponies comic? Yeah, that is definitely mm-hmm. something I'm looking forward to. And I cannot wait to put my hands on it. That Same one is here. going to be good. Same here. Yeah, but anywho, um, Steve, since you're living in the US, any chance of you getting this for us? <laughs> uh, I'm, I, I can try, but I'm not going to Comic-Con, unfortunately. That, it is impossible to get tickets for Comic-Con, and all the people who I know who tried to get tickets, or at least most of them, uh, they tried and couldn't get them. So uh, it's it's... Like it's insane. Like those things sell out in minutes. So, um, uh, well, unfortunately, I'm luck. not going. But like last year with the DJ Pony uh, uh, figure, I mm-hmm. believe they were selling that one on the Hasbro store after the fact, anyway. Mm-hmm. So hopefully, like, those figures look pretty rad. So I mean, like hopefully they'll put those up again and uh, sell them online that way. Oh, I hope so too. But ah, uh, well, since I live here and uh, I have to just say say la vie. And Fo, what about you? Am I looking looking forward to those models? You mean? Yes. I, I I don't actually collect them. I feel like a bad brony admitting that, but I don't have a whole lot of of MLP merch. I've got some plushies, but aside from that, I don't have any of the Funko figures or anything. So huh. I, okay. I've seen the photos, and it looks pretty cool. So for for people who do collect them, I'm sure it's awesome. But hmm. oh, okay. I'm not one of those people. I'm too boring. I'm sorry. I'm oh, no, sorry. No, no, no. It's, it's I'm okay, sorry. Man. It's okay, man. It's okay. It's cool. Well, sometimes we don't have enough space or whatnot. And, well, if you're going to buck this year, now we know what to get you. <laughs> <laughs> I hope to make it. We'll see. Yay. But anywho, that's the news. I am Romuald, and this has been the MBS Show News. Back to you, Norman. Thanks, Rom, and thank you for doing the news for us every week. My pleasure. And let's move on to the next topic. And next topic is guest time. And in today's guest time, we have the developers for Pony cons an application for the ios and android device that tells us where pony cons are happening so guys how are you doing doing pretty good um we we put out the uh, we we put out the pony cons app a couple uh weeks ago for ios we started working on android but we're not quite there yet (laughs) oh really no because when i say when i look at the website hmm. yeah now we're kind of just cranking along getting some uh, updates ready for it Ooh, I cool, just have cool. to clarify though that it's Steve is the is the real developer. I curate the the data that goes into it, but all of the design and the implementation, all of that is entirely his department. So mm. he should get all of the credit 
or alternatively, all of the blame. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all, then. Of it. all of the blame. If you hate the app, then blame Steve. If you love the app, then thanks, Steve. Steve. <laughs> All right. So I'm, I'm going to get blamed either way because of the hashtag blame fall papers. But yeah, <laughs> blame fall papers. Hmm. So anywho, um, mind introducing yourself to the people who might not know who you are and what you do? Yeah. So I'm Steve Streza. I'm a professional iPhone devel- uh, app developer. Uh, I have been since the launch of the iPhone back in or the launch of the App Store in 2008. I've uh, been working for a number of companies out in Silicon Valley, uh, and currently I'm self-employed, which leaves me a lot of free time to build things like an app to track horse conventions. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, and then, like I said, I became in, uh, earlier. I became involved with the fandom, and uh, for a while I'd been looking for a way to kind of bring my talents to the fandom and bring that to the people who, you know, care about My Little Pony. But that's was for a long time prohibitively difficult just mm-hmm. because, uh, you know, there's copyright concerns and all those kind of things that, you know, maybe get taken a little less seriously when it comes to things like artists and musicians and stuff as opposed to software, which, you know, you have to go through Apple and Apple has to go and talk to people at Hasbro and all oh, of this stuff. Yeah. Like, it becomes a, a big old mess. But mm-hmm. after, um, after BronyCon last year, which was my first convention ever, I had uh, such a great time that I wanted to see if there was a way to kind of help people get to a convention that they may have never known was there and stuff. And uh, for a while, <clears throat> I had known that, you know, Full Papers had been curating all of this data about all of these past and future conventions through his massive Google Doc spreadsheet. I that, love spreadsheets. Uh, oh, <laughs> spreadsheets are wonderful. <laughs> If you haven't seen that, it's just a massive pile of data. It's if you're if you're a data junkie at all, you should take a look at that spreadsheet cuz man, has he done a great job at kind of organizing everything. Mm, that's actually um, what I used to follow uh before the the app. That was a mm-hmm. very good spreadsheet. It was a very good <laughs> yeah. way to uh, organize it. That was great. Yeah. Thank you. But uh the The, sort of what my career has been sort of based around has been more about taking data and just making it more accessible, making it more understandable. And so, uh, you know, we started talking, um, I mean, we were talking before BronyCon, but after BronyCon, I kind of went to full and was just like, hey, can we use this data to kind of make an actual app out of it and kind of help with presentation? And uh, he very graciously was like, yeah, of course. And he was very willing to help uh, get the data in the right format so that we could actually put it into an app and make it look nice and work really well mm. so uh after that we had spent you know a couple weeks getting the app together getting it up and running uh and getting the designs in place and then we submitted it to apple and apple was like no you, you, <laughs> really you can't do that you're violating so many copyrights be- you know, we just know this um even though we we weren't we at no point in yeah. the app were we using any copyrighted art where we're using any show characters in the art um We were, you know, going to the conventions themselves and saying, hey, you've got OCs, you've got logos, you've got backgrounds. Can we use that stuff to kind of help make our app better and in doing so help promote your convention? Mm-hmm. And a lot of the conventions that we talked to were like, yeah, of course, here's all the things you need and, you know, just make it look nice and don't give it to anybody. So, you know, we put a bunch of OCs into the app, but the mm-hmm. OCs were thus, you know, given to us by conventions and the conventions obviously a lot of time – wanted them to reflect show style. So you kind of follow that chain through and you go like, well, you know, you can't really go to Apple and say, you know, this isn't copyrighted uh, because it just happens to look like the show that you, everybody knows. Um, so, you know, they came back and said, you know, no, you guys are violating copyright, so we're not going to let you on the store. And we tried pleading for a while and, you know, appealing to them and for a while, like trying to reach out to Hasbro and see if anybody would help us there. But in the end, it just came down to like, you know, having to actually meet with people in person at Apple, walking them through the app step by step and going like, you know, no, there is no copyright violations here. This is all wow. either fair use or anything. Like this was a 10 month process of wow. trying to just get them to <laughs> oh say like, God. okay, this is okay. Yeah, it was, it was pretty chaotic, but that, okay. You, oh my God. That's su- such a knucklehead behavior from Apple. Are you kidding? No, well, mean... it's kind of understandable because, I mean, first of all, in the Apple app review rules, it says we can reject your application 
for any reason that we want. Even if it's not covered in our rules, we can do it for literally any reason that we want. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, which kind of makes sense, because it is their store. Yeah, of course. Um, but don't but... they have like people watching it, people checking on it to see if it's like, okay, like, do they really need your help to go through the app? Can it, cannot they do, the, do it themselves? They, their reviewers had concluded that we were using copyrighted artwork, or that we were uh, putting in stuff that resembled copyrighted artwork in an attempt to be like, um, like a ripoff almost. Not mm. like we were we were trying to pursue that style. So in doing so, we were trying to create something that was supposed to like leech off of the pony brand. Mm. Which, oh my despite God. the fact that obviously the the app had always been intended to be free and it always will be free, you just mm. need to throw yeah. that out there as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're not going to make so much money by not charging a penny for the. Uh, but what yeah. the hell, Apple? God damn it! <laughs> I mean, it's it's uh, it like I said, a lot of the artwork that we got from conventions, which we wanted to do because we wanted to, you know, we could have just made this app like a, a simple list of all of the names and stuff, and it would have been super boring. And, yeah. you know, that's not what this, you know, this fandom has so many great artists and so much awesome art. We wanted to put that in the app wherever we can. So it, it would it would feel like a waste, almost like I didn't want to do it if, you know, we had mm. to kind of strip out all of that artwork and just kind of go with like a basic, like, you know, email style yeah. list. You know, so. I, I'm looking at it right now and the one that's popping up right now is two, uh, Crystal Fair and Everfree Northwest. And the pictures that you are using, they're really awesome. Mm-hmm. And that artwork was submitted to us. Uh, you know, we re- we reached out to those conventions and said, "Hey, you know, we have this app. Uh, and this app exists. Its its sole purpose is to promote your convention, and we can do that a lot more effectively if we have access to your sort of backgrounds, your OCs, to your logos, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And you know, every time that or most of the time that we do that, the conventions will come back with, to us." And, you know, here, just go, here's a bucket of assets and here's, like, how you're allowed to use them. Mm. Uh, otherwise, go nuts. And then, you know, we'll package it up nicely into a, into a banner that really fits our app oh, and sort okay. of our style. And we'll put that into the app, like, pretty much right away. So uh, if any conventions are listening to this, please send us your artwork. Mm. We would love to feature it in our app. Okay. Um, so, okay, um, you mentioned that, uh, Steve, you yourself developed the app and... Full, you collect the data. And who's the artist? Uh, We don't... Well, it it depends. Um, As far as, like, assembling the banners and stuff goes, Mm -hmm. uh, we either do that... Like, I'll do that myself, or we will have the conventions kind of send us a pre-assembled banner. Mm. Um, We have uh, Kat Whitney, who does some of the art for us, and she's working on a new icon for us. Uh, that kind of thing. Um, but in general, it's kind of just like, you know, when it comes to the conventions itself, we, we are trying to use their artwork as much as possible because their artwork is a part of the convention brand. So, uh, you know, that is something that we would just like to take from them and use because they already have very, you know, they're in in many cases, their OCs are iconic to the conventions. So if they have a particular Mm. OC, or particular style that they like using, we want to use that if we can. Mm, okay. So recently, um, my other co-host, Daniel Anthony, talked to you, right, Full? Yes, yes, regarding updating the um, oh, updating yeah. the entry for that con in the app. Yes. Yeah. So, so I, I how now. was <laughs> that? How did that go? Because um, he told me a few things and I didn't really understand. So mind walking through the process of say me as a convention saying hey i got a convention so how do how does one add to your list really it's just a matter of, of either reaching out to me or reaching out to steve and so well, i do i'm fairly um what's the word i'm looking for here oh there. obsessive doesn't sound like the right word but i keep an eye out uh, I keep no, an it's eye obsessive out for convention news <laughs> I keep an eye out for convention news and, you know, new, new cons cropping up or new information about a con announcing guests. And I keep the spreadsheet kind of up to date on that. And now, in addition to that, I will update uh, the information on the back end, which feeds into the app as well. So if a convention reaches out to me or to Steve and says, hey, this con's happening or, hey, we have this new guest, we can then add that information very, very quickly and have that appear mm. updated live in, in all the apps. 
or so the app installations. Did you have any convention say no to you to be added on the app? Well, we no. have been pursuing, like, we have collected the information about the conventions ourselves, mostly full papers. Um, uh, so, like, as far as that goes, like, that's all public record kind of stuff. It's not really something that a convention can stop kind you. of... It, it's not something that they really care to have removed, plus mm. it's not something that's really kind of, like, their business to ask, almost. But, mm. like, if someone was really, really opposed to it, I think we could probably do it, but I don't think, like, like I said, this is exists to be a promotional vehicle for conventions as much as it is a means for fans to find conventions. Oh, true, true. Yeah, so, like, and so far, how what's been more, more, more common? You guys approaching conventions or conventions coming to you and saying, hey, can we be on the app or can we be on the list? Or uh, what's, what's the most frequent uh, thing that happened? Well, now well, that the app is out. Was, oh, yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, I'll let you uh, take this one. <laughs> the app. Before the app was out, we were kind of going to conventions and asking them for art. And since we had no presence, because we were trying to get all of this stuff before we had announced anything, so that when we did announce, everything would look great. Uh, since we didn't really have a presence at all, some people thought we were just, like, you know, trying to steal their art. So, you know, we kind of either would get ignored or they would just go round and round until they just stopped answering our emails. After the app has come out, we have been... Um, inundated a mm. lot with art requests and with updating information and stuff. Um, so from that perspective, like once the app came out, um, everybody started paying attention to us because they wanted their art in the app. Cause they see, you know, the difference between a convention that has art and that doesn't have art. Like the ones that do have art jump off of that page. Whereas the ones that don't kind of just like fade into the background a little bit. So, mm. um, mm. And then as far as, like, conventions and guests and stuff like that goes, like, beforehand, they would, uh, you know, we ran the Twitter account, mostly full, uh, ran the Twitter account, and they would send us their announcements, um, and, you know, we'd retweet whoever, whichever convention, like, so, you know, Everfree Northwest announces Kathy Westlock. Yeah, we'll retweet that, sure. Mm. Um, and we would also use that information to kind of keep our metadata up to date so that when the app was ready to go, uh, you know, we could update that stuff pretty easily. Oh, okay. So you, you mentioned guests. So um, previously, or oh, well, yeah, previously, uh, Every Free North West didn't announce Tony Fleece to their convention. So how do you guys update that? Because uh, I'm guessing that you won't do an update version point something every week, right? So how do you update the guest list for the convention and for the app too? You want to take this one, full? Uh You can take it if you want. Oh, I can... Well, you, um, uh, uh, go ahead. <laughs> you do it. So we have uh, in the app, the, the app has a pile of code that goes to our server. And basically, whenever the app launches, it will just fetch all of the metadata about all the conventions and guests, who is going to what, who is booked for what. And then we'll update that stuff in the app. Um, that is, you know, all based off of a few files that exist on a server somewhere. And uh, what will usually happen is we'll get the announcement. Either they'll send it to us or we'll find out about it on, you know, whatever, you know, their website or their Twitter account or, you know, one of the news sites or anything mm -hmm. like that. Okay. And um, we'll just go into those those files, update the appropriate record. So say, you know, Tony Fleeks comes and it's going to Everfree. So we'll find his entry and we'll find the Everfree entry. And then we'll say like, okay, well, he's going to this and this convention booked this guest. And then... You just save that file out, and uh, you know the next time people open the app, it automatically downloads that information. Mm -hmm. So we don't have to. Uh, when it comes to just updating the existing metadata, or when it comes to like adding new guests and adding new conventions and stuff, that is a transparent process that just happens automatically in the uh, background. All right, all right. Uh, and so... nobody who uses the app will ever notice. It just you know you open the app and everything is up to date. Mm -hmm. That's what you want. I so... think it's. I think. It noting as well that even though it's sitting in files on a server somewhere at this point we are hoping at some point in the future to open it up maybe provide some way that cons or interested parties can more easily just access that body of information so other people can do cool stuff with presenting it or researching stuff and we've got uh, my friend and very talented developer natasha is 
working on that. So keep an eye out for that at some point in the future. Mm. Well, okay, yep. okay. We'd love to be able to see what other people can do when uh, they get presented with this body of information, because there's a lot there. Yeah. Oh, and we're not, it's, it's not a case of trying to sit on this information. It's a case of quite the opposite, of trying to get it out there into as many hands, <laughs> as many interested hands as possible. Oh, that's, yeah, why yeah. I start, that's why I did the spreadsheets, and it's, it's why Steve has done the app. Oh, that, that's cool, that's cool. So, Steve, when updates come out, is it um, bug fixes or is it adding new features? Well, so far we've done one bug fix update, um, and that has mostly been just like fixing crashes and stuff. We did add iOS 6 support, which was a surprisingly popular feature request. <laughs> uh, it was The first version was iOS 7 only, so mm-hmm. you, know, you have to have uh, the most up-to-date software in order to get it. Um, but a lot of people had asked us for iOS 6, which I didn't expect at all, but there it is. And it wasn't that much work to get it running, so we've got it running. Uh, cool. But going forward, uh, we've got a big update that's going to be coming out. That's going to have some new features in it. One of the features that we're going to be putting in there, uh, if we can get it done, is, is something called Favorites, where oh. you'll be able to mark a convention <laughs> or a guest or whatever as a favorite. And then all of that stuff will appear under a, a separate tab. Uh, and that's, you know, if you, if you say, want to know when, uh, you know, certain show guests are going to conventions or if you will, are going to a handful of conventions and you want to kind of keep a short list of what those are, mm-hmm. you can use this kind of new favorite system to do that. And, Very good idea. Um, and hopefully, if we, can, if we can get this part done, we're going to do notifications, push notifications for those favorites. So, for example... If you favorited Everfree Northwest and they announced Tony Fleeks is coming on, uh, we'll update the data, but because you marked Everfree Northwest as a favorite, we'll actually send a push notification to everybody who did that and just say, hey, uh, the convention that you favorited, uh, it just announced new guest. Oh, awesome. So, so, it, reminds me, it reminds me a lot of, uh, don't be offended for making this comparison, but it reminds me a lot of the subscriptions feature on YouTube, that you don't need to go to the person's channel to see the, uh, the new video that they posted. You can just go to your subscriptions, and it's there. It's the newest, the most recent one. Mm-hmm. That's, uh, that's really convenient, and it sounds like... It, it's going to save a lot of trouble, and it's going to save a lot of people having to needlessly uh, move around looking for information. It's going to appear directly on their feeds. That is a right. great idea. Yeah, this, like I said, this is about taking that information and making it more accessible. So, uh, you know, helping people who go to a lot of these uh, conventions or helping even the show staff themselves, mm-hmm. um, you know, keep a better ta- keep a better tab on where they're going and sort of who's going to what and helping figure all that stuff out is uh, is is really cool f- is really cool to be able to put into this app. Okay, so okay, um you mentioned mm-hmm. about guests. So I'm guessing this is only for show guests and people who work on the show, not the fandom. Right now it is. Uh, we're looking at ways to bring in more of the community into the app, um, not just through like uh, community guests that like would be artists and stuff that typically appear on panels, but also things like vendors who are going to conventions. Also so musicians who often Musicians, well. the people who do uh, PMVs, those kind of things. Like We want to put as much data as we can in this app, but that has to come with a little bit of uh, you know, hesitation because you don't want to overwhelm people. Mm. So there's a balance to be struck there, and we're right now trying to design the app in such a way that we can you know surface the most important things all the time and then figure out how to layer in the rest you know mm. so some people might not care about you know who the uh, the community guests are maybe we have a way of hiding that some people might not care that you know uh, the comic book writers or something I'm just throwing those examples um, they, they might not care so like can we filter that out some way you know mm. helping oh, okay. just bring a little bit more control to the massive data set that we're building up over this. Um, but that's, that's just a balance. So, you know, we want to bring in more of that data. It's just a matter of controlling how we do it and doing it in a careful kind of uh, deliberate manner. Oh, okay. I mean, it's understandable because, well, um, in terms of a community guest, we are just a few, and who are we to say that we're popular, right? We're just a few nerds on the internet, while the people who deserve all the admiration is the people who work on the show and who have a career around it. Mm-hmm. Well, the like you said, this this was this app was born from 
me having such a good time mm-hmm. at BronyCon. Sort of my my in my initial appeal to kind of going to that was like going to meet show staff and going to listen to them and see their panels and stuff. And even if that wasn't necessarily the reason I go to conventions anymore, uh, that's kind of the ticket in the door. And sort of the first thought around how to design this app was how do we how do we get people who have never been to a convention before? Mm. How do we get them in that door? How do we get them to their first one? Because you know, you go to one and then you'll know right away whether or not this is something that you want to participate in. That's one of the reasons why we included in the app there's a, a map. And that's just a, a map of the world. <laughs> And it will show you with little pins every convention that is happening around the world. Yeah, uh, First of all, there's a ton of them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> They're yeah. everywhere. You open that tab and your mind is just kind of like, holy crap, how are there so many conventions in so many places? Uh, I am so on, nice. on, this, on, this, on this regard, how big should a convention be in order to be featured in your app? Is like, Does it have to have a number of people behind it? Or is it like if... Like, if a convention with 100 people, if it's still a con- Like, what qualifies as a con to appear on your app? I think we're still sort of working out uh, how we're addressing that. But my sort of uh, criteria for inclusion on the spreadsheet that kind of was the, the initial data set for this was just if it billed itself as a convention. Mm. I mean, most of the smaller gatherings will call themselves meetups. They won't call themselves cons because they themselves are cognizant of the fact that convention usually means a, a large number of people and set panels yeah. and maybe mm-hmm. guests so there's kind of that kind of the, the policing of that term happens with the organizers of the cons mm-hmm. and i just keep an eye out for any gathering that calls itself a con and usually it, it kind of fits in perfectly so uh, we will include it fun fact about your question james uh, recently singapore had their convention which was Cantalot university and they only had about 100 plus people. And from what I heard, the buzz about that convention, they everyone who went there enjoyed themselves and they can't wait for 2015. So even though it's a small convention with a few people, they still got featured on the app and it looks like um, there'll be one next year, probably. Uh, when when it's uh, formally announced, you can look for it in the app. We will, have, we will list it in there. I can't wait to favorite it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, if I do understand right, with the Apple side of things, that you need to pay a certain amount to have your app there, right? Yeah, you have to pay uh, $99 US every year to Mm -hmm. have a developer account, and then that entitles you to be able to basically upload however many apps you want. Ah, so essentially you already have one, so you don't need Mm -hmm. to pay. Oh, okay, that's cool. Yeah. This is a per... Per, this is like a per company basis. So my company owns one and then we submit apps through it, but there's no per application fee. In fact, Apple would rather encourage people to submit free apps and stuff. And so if there was like a per application fee, that would kind of disincentivize that. So there's no per download cost. Apple takes care of all of that. Ah, so okay. from our perspective, like it costs us nothing to run this app. Oh, that's cool. And James, except time, oh, no, except time, a lot true. of time. And James, don't you have a question for the Android side of things? Of course, because what's the wh- how does it work? Because you guys started with uh, uh, programming it for uh, for Apple. What's the difference from programming it from uh, from Apple to an Android device? Uh, is it that is it so cumbersome and, and difficult, or less, or or worse? I wouldn't say they're difficult or any. I, I wouldn't say they're better or worse. I think they're just very very different. Um, when you're building an app for Apple, uh, for iPhone, um, that app has sort of a, a, a s- one single place to start, right? That's when you tap the app icon and the app opens. And anywhere else that you might open the app, it still goes through that same kind of workflow where you're kind of setting everything up and getting it all ready to go. From a programmer side of things, that makes things very consistent. It means, you know, if the app opens, then... Uh, you can count on these certain things happening in this specific order, right? Uh, with Android, it's a little different because every single sort of screen in an Android app, as far as I can tell, uh, is kind of treated like an app by itself, meaning, you know, it, you're you're not necessarily just moving from, like, the say, the convention view to the guest view and then back to the convention view. You're actually launching sort of the mini convention app 
and then launching the mini guest app and then launching the mini convention app. You know, it's a totally different system of working. So um, it's not harder. It's just uh, like I've been developing apps for the iPhone for six years. And before that, I was developing apps for the Mac for five. I'm very used to developing under that kind of system. And this is my first real Android app. So I've been using Android along with my iPhone for the last year. And so I'm very familiar with how their apps work and how their UI works and stuff like that. But it's uh, from actual, like, building it out as an app itself, it's a just a different beast. Mm. Um, and on top of that, Android's sort of UI system can be very different, too. Uh, Apple loves using animation in their app designs, Um Android, it's a little tougher to do some of those kind of things. Uh, you can do them, but it's just tougher, especially because you have a much bigger kind of gamut of devices that you have to target because you have to target stuff that was shipped uh, four years ago that has a crappy graphics processor, and then you have to target the thing that was just shipped a couple weeks ago from Samsung or LG or whoever who has, like, this incredibly cool graphics card and everything, right? Like, you have to hit all of those devices, and there's a wide range in there. So you have to kind of be a little selective about what you're going to do you have to kind of check to see you know is this the kind of device that can do really nice transitions if not maybe we just get rid of them because otherwise it's going to look bad that kind of thing it's different uh it's not something that i've been doing for uh ios for a long time but it's it's not better or worse okay it's different it's different but not for not for worse no Okay. I've been rather enjoying developing for Android. It's just, like I said, it's a breath of fresh air mm. from what I'm used to. But just because I haven't had as much exposure to it, uh, you know, getting things up and running is much slower for me versus doing it on iPhone. Hmm. Okay, so you, you did mention slower. So how long did it take you to develop the app on the iPhone and develop it again on the Android? Um, well, we're still in the middle of, you know, we're still more at the beginning of building it for Android. It's not quite out yet. Hmm. Uh, but for iPhone, I think the entire app took about, I want to say a week to do Oof. sort of the, the, the main design. Like it, it, there's not a whole lot in the actual app that is, um, that particularly intense. It's, it was more about just like building out some of the designs and making sure that we could update the data. Hmm. Uh, once that was all in place, like it was just, you know. We need a button for a Twitter account. We need a button to represent a guest. We need a button to represent a website. Um, and just kind of getting all of those pieces in place. And because I've been doing it for so long, I'm just used to thinking that way. It's very easy for me to go, oh, well, this is how you build a button mm -hmm. cell. This is how you build a, a URL cell, you know, whatever. Uh, uh, so for Android, you know, we've got sort of the basics in place, but it's not very pretty yet. So... Um, and, and we've got some of the flows kind of connected, but it's not necessarily talking to the right database yet because we're still kind of talking about what we're doing for our sort of data system. Um, so, you know, it's moving. It's moving a lot slower, but it is moving. Hmm. That's what counts, the fact that it's actually moving forward. Oh, yep. true, true. It'll get there. So if you're waiting for the Android version, just be patient. I'm sorry. Uh, Sorry, it's, it's not done yet. It's Go back cool. to the working station, slave. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, man, Steve, it's cool, it's cool, because everybody knows Apple was a race. <laughs> Norman, are you going, I'm going to have a very serious conversation with you and how wrong you are in that respect, but that's going to be after the show. Oh, yes. And oh, I'll God, have, what have I done? I'll have to debate you. I started you later. the iOS Android flame war. No. Spice no. Apple. Actually, you know what? I despise Apple, but I don't prefer Android. I just don't give a crap. <laughs> so, Apple is just so everywhere, and people always told, uh, told me, uh, there, it, there, is no, there is no middle point. Mm. It's either, I love it, it's the best thing ever, or, oh, my God, I hate it. I cannot stand it. Oh, there is no. no one who simply says, ah, it's okay. No, oh, okay. no. Um, James, to be honest. No one on the internet anyway. Mm -hmm. yeah. To, to yeah. be honest, James, to be honest, James, I do like all devices. I, I don't really care. Uh, just for me personally, I put in a lot of money on the iOS store. So <laughs> for me to jump ship now, no. <laughs> I put a lot of money on Pokemon as well, but I can still watch Digimon. What's your point? No, I mean, the App Store, Ooh. App Store, when you spend that money, if you change to another store and you have to rebuy everything, no. So, but no, <laughs> I, I do enjoy Samsung too because of its big screen and its looks and whatnot. And it's cool. I mean, I love all tech. And talking about tech, 
a Windows phone. Do you have any plans on doing that? Well, Windows phone is a, is, is, is an entirely separate beast. Um, one thing I'll say to that is probably like, you know, for every, you know, we've gotten probably like over a hundred requests for an Android app and maybe one or two requests for a Windows phone app. So, mm-hmm. um, our our kind of focus right now is going to be on Android. building out the Android experience mm-hmm. first. If there is a big outcry for Windows Phone, we'll we'll definitely look at it. But you know, just as somebody who's been in the tech industry for a while, there is uh, not nearly as much interest in Windows Phone. So <laughs> it's a tougher sell to kind of spend the time working on that. Yeah, <laughs> just look at Game Sorry, you know, Sorry. it's kind of funny that you say that because my friend purchased a Windows phone a few days ago, uh, and all of a sudden you're here saying, "Oh, you're kind of, kind of obsolete." <laughs> no. no, they're not obsolete, and I actually rather like really like Windows Phone as a as a device. But mm. the problem is nobody has them, yeah. or at least very few people have them compared Jeez. to Android yeah. and iPhone. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's um, you, know, you want to spend the time to build something that will give you the most you know, bang for your mm-hmm. buck. Uh, you wanna, we want to build the experience that the most people can use. Mm-hmm. So for right now, that's going to be iPhone and Android. <laughs> yeah. And James, uh, we recently talked about the MLP Game by Game Loft. They just recently released the game on the Windows devices, recently, 2014. And the games have been out for how many years now? <laughs> Uh, two. Yeah. So you can. Yeah. So that'll give you some ideas to how much of a hurry some of these companies are to get on Windows Phone. Yeah. And that's a company. That's people who've got like, you know, lots of employees and free time to kind of spend building this stuff. Mm-hmm, and, mm-hmm. You know, I think even the Game Loft uh, team, they'll have uh, they'll have an engine that kind of drives most of their games. So, you know, by and large, it's not it's not perfect, but like by and large, you can get eighty ninety percent of the game running on a on a platform like Windows Phone just by getting the underlying engine running. Hmm. So you know, if it if it took them two years to do that too, like <laughs> you know, what what does that say about their priority for that? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, to me, all this um, software talk is really interesting, and well, it goes back to the debate of which is popular because we could have a Nokia phone with Windows, and the percentage of people using that is really slim. And here in Malaysia, the the interesting fact is we are, our community here in terms of devices is based on what's popular. And to tell that, you can just go to a phone accessory store and look what products they're selling. Um, the one that I've seen is for the iPhone and Samsung. Other than that, there's nothing. So if you yep. want to look for a Lumia or whatever else, tough luck. Probably got to import at that point. Oh, yeah. I mean, or buy original from the store. Mm. But right. but anywho, um, as far as I can tell, it's only Steve, Fole, and who was the third person again? Uh, Kat uh, working on the graphics, Kat Whitney. Yeah, and Kat then Whitney. also uh, Tasha working on the, the back end. Mm, okay, so... If someone was interested to join you guys, how would they do that? And are you looking for anyone? I don't think we're looking for anyone particular right now. If somebody wanted to get in touch with us and they had a experience working in something that you know we needed, uh, we'd definitely be willing to talk. But like right now, we're probably not really looking for anything big. So I don't really know. Like if they wanted to come to us and say they wanted to help somehow, you know. We'd love to talk, and uh, but I don't really, like I said, I don't really know what we would need at this point. Mm, okay, we but... certainly do want to hear from from the conventions as well, though. Uh, yeah, if, if our biggest they problem want is to the approach conventions. with information or or yeah. banner graphics, mm. hint hint. They should <laughs> definitely get in touch. Yeah, th- yeah. that's true. That's true. I, I mean, looking at the conventions, it's like promoting your swag again. If your convention has a lot of pictures and it's featured on the app it'd be more striking than just a map of your country. Right. Right. Um, but we're, what we're probably more inclined to do is to open the data. Once we have our sort of database system set up, we're probably more likely to open up that data to third party use. Mm. So somebody else could build like somebody else could build a windows phone app if they really wanted to, for example, mm-hmm. using our, mm. using our kind of back end. Um, that's a that's really cool. Like you like uh, like the base of it. 
Yeah, we would we would uh, you know open up access to the APIs that we use to build the the PonyCon's official app, and then we would let other people have access to that. You know, uh, with very limited restrictions, just to make sure that like people aren't going to be hitting our you know back end a million times a day for mm-hmm. nothing important. You know, just simple things that aren't going to be invasive at all to anybody's doing this right. Um, but you know, at that point, we're you know we want to open that data up. We want to see what other people do because like we built this app not to become you know like you know famous in the community or anything. We wanted to just build this to help people find conventions, find events going around near them and sort of get a better sense of all this data just because there's so many conventions now. Oh, so if yeah. somebody else wanted to come along and build that same thing, but they had a better way of doing it or they had a more interesting way of doing it, you know, by all means. Hmm, so all they have to do is just ask for the API and they can do it, right? Uh, right now we're still working on getting to that point uh... where we actually have a real kind of API as opposed to the system that we have now, which is um, kind of more you know, glue and duct tape, but uh, <laughs> it's kind of low tech comparatively. Yeah, yeah. but that's you know, that, that's something that is going to be happening hopefully in the short term here. So after that, you know, we'll, we're, we would love to talk and, and, you know, that system, hopefully we can scale up so that, you know, individual conventions might even be able to edit their own, their own information. So mm-hmm. if they're about to announce a new guest, they, they can, can just put it, it in our app immediately and then announce the guest and then everybody opens the app and they see the guest. Okay. That kind of thing. Oh, no, no, this brings up a question. Since you open things up, wouldn't you be afraid of trollers trolling the system and just messing it up? We would have a system in place both uh, to ensure that the people that we gave access to were credentialed by their conventions uh, and that any any changes that would go through the system would be uh, either able to be rolled back or subject to review, depending on what we were going to, what we wanted to do. Mm-hmm. So, uh, like for example, if Everfree Northwest needed an account, they could send us an email from an official Everfree Northwest account, like mm-hmm. an email account, and then we would respond to them with, uh, you know, credentials for an account through our database, and then they would be able to edit the Everfree Northwest page, but not say, uh, you know, BabsCon or something, you know, some other page. They would have a limited access to be able to edit that stuff mm, oh, that okay. they need to edit, but so, not everybody else. And so then we, if somebody was to compromise that password or something, we would be able to then, you know, and then, then they used it to post a bunch of troll stuff. We would be able to either, um, you know, review that stuff before it went live or roll it back after it goes out. Mm. Oh, okay, so that makes a lot of sense because, well, it's the internet and jerks are everywhere yep you, have to be you can you can control that. it we, we part of my background has also been coming from a security uh standpoint and, and making sure that you know companies who hire me do so in a way that helps them stay safe from hackers and stuff so um i i have a little bit of background in in keeping trolls out of communities so that i'm hoping won't be a too big a problem yay that's awesome that's awesome and I think I'm done. Uh, any of you guys got any question for uh, Steve and Fo? No, I'm good. I have a question for Steve. Oh, okay. Steve, are we ever going to restore the uh, special icon we had for that certain convention? <laughs> no, I'm... Uh, we Part of getting this uh, stuff through Apple involved signing certain legal documents and... Uh, <laughs> That they have my signature on them, so uh, you know, uh, legal kind of affidavit thing. So, non divulgation agreement kind of stuff. Yeah. So as much as I would love to, and it's the it's a wonderful banner. Um, you know, un, un, for, like we could remove uh, the specific horse in question, and mm-hmm. it would be fine. But until then, uh, we no. we can't. Oh. <laughs> Oh well, I mean, now now you're left leaving us wondering what is this banner that you're just talking about? Thanks. I'll put it this Paul. way: we we had a we had a certain banner for a certain convention that will remain nameless, but uh, will remain infamous in the community. So. Oh, oh, yeah. See, now you all know what we're talking about. <laughs> that, uh, could you yeah, please fill me for a moment? That banner, fill me in because I don't know. For a moment, I thought you were saying that the banner. Imp- in question had a codex through which you can access the real origin of Steve Jobs and oh, all God. his talent. 
So I was like, oh, that's it. It was just a silly little in joke we had when we were oh. doing the testing. But as, as Steve said, mm. it was necessary to, yeah, to remove yeah. that mm-hmm. and for and fully, the final fully, product. You and me need to talk later because I got news. But anywho, um, I guess there's the questions, and I guess we can end this. And well, thank you, Steve. Thank you, Full, for coming on and sharing your experience with this and promoting your app. This is a really good app. Thank you so Thanks much for having, for having us. us on. No problem. So anyway, um, where can they find you and download your app? Uh, the app is, uh, you can follow our Twitter account, which is PonyCons, and you can find uh, the app at PonyCons.com slash get, uh, and that will go download the, uh, that will send you to the app store so that you can download it. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So anywho, um, thank you guys for coming on, and let's move on to the next topic, which is shoutouts. And my shout out goes to you guys, Steve and Fo. Mm-hmm. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you so much, oh, guys. Thank you. Thank, thank you for you. having us. No problem. It's been a it has been a pleasure. Yeah, and don't be shy. Come on again because we are having so much fun. <laughs> for sure. And absolutely. Assuming I can assuming I can wake up in time because I'm on the the west coast in uh, California here and <laughs> Silicon Valley. Our yeah. time zones don't quite line up. <laughs> yeah. Time zone sucks, but. Yep. But anywho, uh, James, thank you for coming on. Uh, you know, there is there was nobody else available. Oh no, man! And, and thank you for. I'm sorry for taking up much of your time, man. Nah, that that that's fine. These two weeks haven't been too kind of to me, and apparently they're going to keep kicking my ass even after they are over. So, ah, dear me. Um, that's life, c'est la vie. And thank you, Ron. Uh, right. I hate. I hate to say. It. I hate. I hate that word. Uh, I hate mm, that phrase. That's uh, life. Uh, I hate that. <laughs> oh, but well. Anywho, thank you, Ron, for coming on and reading the news as usual. My pleasure. And also a special shout out to one fan girl out there, Puffy. Thank you for listening to the show. You're awesome. So, anywho, um, James, any shout outs? Well, I want to give a shout out to Fall Papers for coming in, finally showing Aww. up, and uh, having a good chat. Like, too bad that it wasn't recorded. <laughs> uh, the conversation we had before the podcast because it was awesome. We were talking uh, about Marvel and DC films and all sorts of silliness. Indeed. Yeah, it was great. We were geeking, we were geeking out like the two nerds that we are. It was so much fun. <laughs> and of course, big big shout out to Steve for uh, not just making the app, but coming into the podcast and uh, very kindly telling us about about it and um, uh, and all the things that are coming in the future, which uh, looking forward to. Very looking forward to. And uh, shout out to Norman, of course, for letting me come in here and. Basically taking over the podcast like the Sp- the Spaniards to Cobra America, uh, uh, very unfairly so I have to say because no. it's his show and yet I never shut up like I'm doing right now. No problem. And um, and a shout out to Ron for not putting us to sleep uh, this week with his news reading. Uh, unlike usual, because God, don't let this guy near you or he do not operate heavy machinery near <laughs> Rome while reading fanfics. Oh God, no. <laughs> <laughs> but Rom, anything to say to that? Shout out? No, nah, he's totally right. He's totally right. <laughs> <laughs> I should be walking around with a warning sign. Oh, hey, fanfic my... reader. Oh, Listen okay. at your own risk. You can make Lord of the Rings sound boring. What oh. is wrong with you? Oh, well, my. in case someone's addicted and want to get out of the fandom, I could help. Uh, no, no, no. So anyway... Or if someone has insomnia, I could... <laughs> Be the doctor to that. Um, you want to get out of the fandom, not want to kill themselves. Oh my God, God. <laughs> what is wrong with you? Well, there are people who want to do both. You never know. Oh no, <gasps> no, no. So, anywho, Rom, shout outs. Any shout outs to all the people in the call in the podcast. Thank you for being here and letting me be here amongst awesome. you guys. And shout out to my mom. Hi, mom. <laughs> Yay, that's oh, awesome oh. of you. So, anyway, um, Steve, shout outs. I want to shout out to my cohorts on the app, uh, Full Papers, of course, for curating this data, which uh, the app wouldn't exist if it wasn't for him doing that, so thank you. Uh, And to Kat and Tasha for their help uh, getting us artwork and uh, working on our back end for it. It's uh, it's really cool to just be able to see this kind of project come together from so many disparate talents into one single thing. and that's been a blast to uh, watch. Also want to send a shout out to Apple for finally uh, relenting on their, their copyright hold on us. They actually have 
uh, some very reasonable, really nice people that, you know, once you get and talk to them, you know, kind of face to face, they can really help out. So that's how we got this uh, app problem resolved. And uh, now it's out. So, you know, thank you to them. And just shout out to the cool people in the fandom too. hearts for all of you. (laughs) Awesome. And Foley, what about you? I think Steve said it all, really. I mean, big shout out to him for, for building the app that makes all of the spreadsheet look so nice and not just a boring spreadsheet. Um, I like spreadsheets, but not everyone else shares my love of them, I know. Uh, <laughs> shout out as well, obviously, to, to Tasha and Kat for all of the work they've done and will continue to do, hopefully. Um, and shout out to everyone who has downloaded the app and will do so in the future, I hope. Thank you for enjoying it. Thank you for, you for all your your feature requests and your updates and just telling us that you like it. We're, we're glad to hear it. Awesome. awesome yes. Awesome. All of that. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thank you. And if you have any questions, concerns or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at nbshow at gmail.com. And if you would like to email us personally, links are in the show notes. You could also reach us on Twitter. The show's account is at the NBS show. Sweetie, but we'll, well, essentially try to make her own app that complains about James cursing which he doesn't do much on the show so that's good that's not a word <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> oh dear and also you can they follow we're doing so good yeah I know and you can also listen to me tweet about stuff at Norman Sanzo I tweet about well currently I can't tweet about food so toys and whatever tickles my fancy and James where can they reach you uh, they can. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. Not do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> uh, th- uh, they can find me on Twitter on uh, James Cork, James underscore Cork, of course. Uh, you can check my DeviantArt on jamescork.deviantArt.com, and you can check my Ask Pony blog on askmovieslate.tumblr.com. Awesome. And Rom? You can find me at twittercom slash z 69 or at my deviant rollishes.deviantArt.com, or you can ask my OC as askjitterlines.tumblr.com Awesome. And also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can catch us on ponyvillelive.com. Links will be provided in the show notes. So, I am Norman Sanzo. I can't put these things together! (laughs) (laughs) I am Romeo Old. I am Fall Papers. I am Steve Strezza. And we'll see you guys next week by me clicking on the app make podcast button. I hope that exists. Please, someone make it. Steve, could you make that? <laughs> <laughs> no promises, but can make anything. So. Yay. <laughs> All right. You see, Norman, you have to be worth it in order to get an app done by Steve. Uh, you, you're ooh. not worth it. <laughs> oh. Ouch. Ouch. <laughs> anyway, yeah. goodbye, guys. <laughs> Bye-bye. Adios. See ya. Farewell. Can you see it with your The same starry skies tonight Or are you too far away? Everywhere I turn I get sympathy Just a few days and we had history You and me There's so much I wanted to say Brings clarity to my heart. Take me away to a place where we can always stay. Out of the spotlight, away from the crowd. Let's go get lost and never be found. Let's go get lost and never be found.
Oh.